Welcome to Physics for Engineers. And today's lesson is about impulse and momentum. Our learning objectives are to define impulse and momentum, to understand impulse momentum theorem, to be able to apply the conservation of linear momentum, to identify the different types of collision, and lastly, to solve problems involving impulse, momentum, and collision. Our topic outline. First, we have impulse momentum theorem. Then we have the conservation of linear momentum. And lastly, is collision. Impulse momentum theorem. There are many questions involving forces that cannot be answered directly by applying the Newton's second law. For example, when a moving band collides head on with a compact car, what determine which way the wreckage move after the collision? Or in playing pool, how do you decide how to aim the cue ball in order to knock the ball into the pocket? And when a meteorite collides with Earth, how much of the meteorite's kinetic energy is released in the impact? A common theme of all these questions is that they involve forces about which we know very little. The forces between the car and the moving band, between the two pole balls, or between the meteorite and the earth. Remarkably, we will find in this chapter that we don't have to know anything about this process to answer questions of this kind. So our approach is using with the two new concepts, which is the momentum and impulse, and also the new conservation law, the conservation of momentum. So what is momentum, by the way? So the momentum of an object, or sometimes we call linear momentum, is the product of the object's mass and the velocity. In symbol, we have P, the small letter P is equal to M, which is the mass, and V, which is the velocity. Example, when, you, when a ball is being kicked by a soccer player, although the ball has a light weight, but because of the force exerted by the, by the soccer player, it creates or it produces a large amount of momentum because of its velocity. Or when men push a big bus, let's say a bus, with a, uh, with a massive mass, and, and this men have able to push the, the bus, it also create a large amount of momentum because due to its large amount of mass. So all in all, when we say momentum, it is a mass in motion. Anything or any object that is in motion develop momentum. But let's say a uh, airplane that at rest at the um, at rest, it has no momentum because it has zero velocity. Linear momentum is a vector quantity and it points to the same direction as that of the velocity. So the standard unit for the momentum is kilogram meter per second. Now, what is impulse? Remember when the soccer player kicked the ball and it produced momentum, the, the soccer player in, uh, exerted force to the ball that caused for the change for, of the momentum of the ball. So impulse, uh, this force has an impulse. And this impulse is a product of the average force and the time interval during which the force acts. So in symbol, we have letter J, which capital J, which is the symbol for impulse, which is equal to force times the duration of time or the interval of time that the force is being applied on the object. So impulse is a vector quantity and has the same direction as the average force. And the standard unit for impulse is Newton second. Another example is this. When the baseball is be uh, touch the bat. So 
at an interval of delta t at a very small amount of time, the force is being applied on the ball. So the average of the force being applied in the base ball cause for the change in momentum of the baseball bat. And the, sum, the product of the force being, the average of the force being applied and the interval of time in which it has in contact with the, another object is the impulse. Now, let's have, uh, let's now apply the Newton's law of motion. In the second law of motion, we know that force is equal to mass times acceleration. And also, we know that acceleration is equal to change in velocity over time. So, if we're going to substitute the value or the substitute acceleration with this one and multiply both side by the interval time of delta t we have this one so what can you uh what can you observe force times the change in time is impulse while the mass times the change in velocity or the mass times velocity is momentum or change in momentum because we have change in velocity therefore we have now the relationship that impulse is equal to the change in momentum which lead us to the impulse momentum children Okay, I'm just going to select the, all this I have wrote. Then I'll move to the next slide. Okay. Okay, so for us to be able to apply this new theorem, the impulse momentum theorem, let's have this example. <laughs> 